Right, now that I have now that I have my schema, I'm gonna create my module. And then you have a few different ways of doing this. I'm just gonna show you how I do it in app code. If you want more detailed instructions, we have some other tutorials out there, but I'll walk through a little bit and a lot of this has to do with just my own personal preferences, how I like to develop, what I used to develop, and then what kind of standards I set for myself. So when I'm defining my module, I'm just going to go into my modules folder, and I have app code set up with some nice file templates, but they also have a few built in, such as creating a folder with reference. And this will create a folder on my hard drive, and it will immediately add it as a reference into my modules, uh, or inside of this project. So I'm going to create my assets, which is the root folder of the new module I'll be creating. And as you can see, it showed up here. And if I were to switch over to my actual file browser, you can see my assets is here, but it's empty. And then from here, I'm going to use some shortcuts that I've learned over the past few weeks using app code. So I'm going to create a folder called version 1, so I could have multiple versions of this if I wanted. And then I'm going to have an assets directory underneath that. And this is where I'm going to create uh, subfolders that will contain the actual raw files, the, the images, the audio files, and everything else. And it's just how I like to organize things. So I'm going to create a folder for each kind of asset type. I'm going to create one for images, animations, audio, particles. Now if I expand this out, scroll down a little bit, and there's all of those. And here are all the folders that I just created. And right now there's nothing else in there. Uh, so I actually still need to make a module definition and create a script file to get all things running. So I guess that's uh, the next step here is let's actually make the module definition. So my module definition is going to be an XML format, and instead of creating it you know, through the operating system or using text edit or whatever. I have a template set up in app code. It can just, just makes my life easier. So I'm going to select the version 1 folder and then I'm going to say create a T2D module file for me. And it's just going to have a file name of module. I'm going to point to my schema that I generated earlier and that is a, reg uh, a relative path and I know it's up See, that would go up three directories, but I believe it's actually four. And the module is my assets, version one. Uh, this is just sample assets. I'm not going to have any dependencies. Uh, my type is going to be toy, so I can work with, with this inside of the sandbox. And I will be creating a main.cs uh, to be used with this module, and it will be looking for create and destroy functions. And I can name those whatever I want. But essentially, once I hit OK, if all went well, there it is. There's my module definition. But it appears something has gone wrong. And usually one of the first signs of this is my schema is not in the right place. So either it's, I went too far or didn't go far enough. So let's see. Nope, it's not five. Oh, there we go. There's only three directories up. And now it's all good. You notice no red lines. App code has a decent XML editor. Visual Studio will kind of give you the same feedback. It's like, hey, you want a schema? I can't find it. Let me tell you about that. Uh, and this dependencies is kind of, you know, don't really need that right now. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I know that there's a dynamic field for the, that the sandbox uses. So it's actually a, a category. Notice as I'm typing, I'm getting some red lines saying, you know, this is not working out too well. Uh, I'm going to have to close this off. And what if I go to type anything? Maybe S. S. I suddenly get some pop ups. I get a super class. I get a scope set. I get can save dynamic fields. Oh, what if I do something else? What if I do um, something I know this needs? Maybe say. This is without any additional key presses, what I, or without any typing. What I did is I did control space, and I said, give me all of my options. What all can I do? And this gives me a list of all the potential elements that I can add to this. Now, I'll be honest, uh, the XML editor for Visual Studio is actually a little bit more robust, and it's a little bit more 
reliable, I guess you could say. But app code gets the job done for sure. Ooh, I'm actually going to have a... Oh, no, I still have to close that off. And what I want is declared assets. And inside of my declared assets, I need to have... Uh, let's see if I get some suggestions. Yep, I do. I want to know my path. And the path is just going to be assets. If you remember, I created that folder earlier. And I need to know the extension of things that I'm looking for. So everything's going to be .asset.taml as I create them. And finally, I do want to go recursive searching. Now here's something cool. It's saying that this XML tag has an empty body. Now, let's see, recurse. It's supposed to be a true or false, but what if I put in uh, Mitch? Ooh, does not like Mitch, and why doesn't it? The value of Mitch of attributes recurse on element declared assets is not valid with respect to its type boolean. In other words, this is telling me you need to be a value of boolean, so this text of Mitch is all wrong. If I hit control space, there's my answer. Uh, yes, recurse. Now, for anyone who's been developing uh, XML files, asset definitions, or whatever for Torch2D in the past, they didn't get any of these auto-completion because they didn't have a schema. So you can imagine they're probably going to be very happy, or you should be you know, pretty thankful. You have this now. This gives you a great chance to rapidly create uh, you know, XML files or object definitions and get instant validation and also get suggestions. Maybe you don't know everything. Maybe you didn't know the name of declared asset. And that's, that's why I like about this uh, using a, a good XML editor like AppCode or Visual Studio with a schema is this is going to allow me to quickly create things. All right, so now I have my module definition. If I were to locate that, there's module.tml. In fact, let me open up with a text editor. You know, if you don't have app code, you can't afford it, or you're using something else, you know, maybe you'll use text editor. There it is in raw text with uh, no real schema helping. So, you know, forget that. I'm not going to worry about that. All right, now I have my module definition, and it's saying I, this is what I am, and then I'm going to have assets in this folder path, and I'll be looking for, oop, mistake. There we go. That's what I want to do. So anything that I put inside of these, anything below assets or assets and animations or assets and images, if it has the extension of .asset, .taml, then the asset manager or the database will say, you know, I loaded this module, I scanned this directory, I found these files with this extension, these must be assets, let's load them in as declared assets. Let's, we'll, let's use those for a reference later. So that's a good start. Uh, honestly, I think if I were to just try and run Torque 2D right now, uh, it will probably complain about some missing things. Let's see. I'm going to actually try and find my assets module. There it is. If I click it, nothing so far. That's to be expected, but it could not load the module because it's missing a main.cs. Oh, let's let's fix that real quick. I'm gonna add a actually let me just use my keyboard shortcut. A T2D module script. Again, this is a, a template I've made for my own purposes, but it's kind of handy. Uh, the file name is main.cs, and the name of the I guess module is my assets. I click OK. Look at that. I've got my nice little MIT header. I've got my assets create, my assets destroy, and you know if you if you uh, are an app code user and you want to get your hands on these templates, just leave a message on the video or pop on the Garage Games forums and say, hey, hand it off to me. But you could have written this all. I could have done this all by hand via text editor or through say Xcode's text editor. But this just got me along my way. The the point of this video is not to teach scripting. We want to create assets. So on that note. Let me get some assets real quick. I had stored some earlier. There we go. 
These are the tutorial assets I'll be using. I actually grabbed these from an old version of iTorp 2D, which is a legacy engine. Uh, I've got this nice little background. Uh, I've got some sprite sheets for uh, Soldier. And I've got some music and even an image that we're going to use for particles. So I'm going to start by grabbing all the images. And I'm going to load those into my module. And you can kind of see now why I, I've been doing the things I've been doing. I'm very, I wouldn't say anal, but I'm very strict about how I put things together. And this is my audio file, so that's going to go inside of here, right inside of audio. And if I go back to that, got all my images, got my audio. Now notice uh, there's no animations because I'm going to create those as assets. And there's no particles because it's basically the same thing. I'm going to create a particle asset. And they really only rely on what I create in the images. And then I'll have a single audio asset which will rely on this file. So now I've got my raw files. Make sure I'm still in the right directory for my main folder browser. And now I'm going to go back into app code. And I think I'll start with essentially going through the most used assets and then increase in difficulty. So I'll probably start with creating all of my image assets first, then my animations, then my audio, and then I'll save particles for last since it's kind of a, a complex asset type and you don't have a lot of visualization and kind of have to do this using your own mind and charts. So anyway, uh, yeah, let's, let's get going and creating some images.